Hi everyone, welcome to the CBSN Minnesota Morning Update. I'm Jason DeRush. I hope you had a good weekend. Oh, it was so nice out there. Just splash, splash city, though. Puddles all over the place. You just heard the melting snow, all that water kind of rushing down the storm drains. It's uh, the sign of spring. Perhaps it's fake spring. I overheard some people talking about that on a patio I was sitting at, uh, at Black Walnut Bakery in Uptown. Another couple over there just talking about it. I know it's fake spring, but I had to get out here and have brunch. And I'm glad you did. It was good. Hope you enjoyed it this weekend. It's a top 10 weather day. Woo! Boy, everybody going crazy about it. It's very exciting. Top 10 weather day. Uh, yesterday was a little windy, so that's why they didn't pull the trigger on that. Uh, today, just beautiful. Uh, upper 50s, sunny. Should be a great day. We'll sort of moderate later this week. The temperatures will get down into the mid 40s uh, for highs, and that's kind of where it should be. Uh, this time of year. Let's talk about this. The biggest story in Minnesota and perhaps all around the country today as jury selection gets started this morning in the murder trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. Uh, it has not been a year since George Floyd lost his life and we all saw that video of Derek Chauvin. And so the challenge for the judge and for the attorneys is to try to pick a total of 16 people to be jurors. 12 of them will be jurors, four will be alternates. No one will know who is a juror or an alternate until it's time to deliberate. And the goal is to find people who, what's well, sort of a weird deal, right? Because they want to find people who will acknowledge, yes, I know what happened to George Floyd. Because if you didn't know, is that the kind of person you want on a jury? But you need to find people who are open-minded to evaluate new information. And that is challenging. So here's our question for you. Would you want to be on this jury? I mean, no one really is like, I, I suppose that's another thing they are asking. Do you want to be on the jury? And if you have someone who's like, absolutely, it makes you wonder, like, absolutely, why? Is it because you want to, you know, get... Uh, this guy off or that you want to get him like what what's your agenda you feel like you must have an agenda there um, but I'm curious what you think about being on a, a being on this jury uh, so let us know if called would you serve would you try to get out of it what would your fears be let us know uh, on Facebook because I don't know I'm very grateful for all of the people who are putting themselves on the line to be jurors here and to be fair and to find justice. Uh, that's what a trial really is. It's a search for the truth and a search for justice. Uh, so would you wanna do it? Let us know. Uh, as we mentioned, Derek Chauvin is charged with second degree murder and manslaughter. Within the next uh, couple of minutes, there will likely be motions that will add another charge on. Uh, Chauvin has pled not guilty to both. Uh, the judge is reconsidering that third degree murder charge. Court of Appeals issued an order on uh, Friday that said, nope, you've got to you've got to reconsider this. Uh, and here's the charge. And this is why experts say this charge could be easier to prove, because for third degree murder, you need to prove uh, that the act was eminently dangerous and showed a depraved mind. So you could perhaps make a case that even though Chauvin was not intentionally trying to murder George Floyd, and even though the drugs in George Floyd's system may have played a role, you could try to build a case that Chauvin's actions being on the neck that long with people saying, hey, maybe you, you're, you should get off his neck, and with other officers saying, uh, should we check on him, you could make this case. Uh, will the trial be delayed? We don't know. So all of this could happen this morning. We do know that protesters will be back outside the government center again this morning. They're already starting to gather. They had a silent march through downtown Minneapolis yesterday, and demonstrators saying, uh, you know, they haven't stopped their quest for justice, their view of justice for George Floyd, and then their goal of uh, greater accountability for police. They did pause this march for several minutes to read out loud the names of people 
who have been killed by Minnesota police over the last 20 years. The judge, Hennepin County Judge Peter Cahill, overseeing Derek Chauvin's trial. He is respected. His reputation is no nonsense, that he's fair. His history, he was appointed to the bench in 2007. He's done a bunch of different legal roles. He was a clerk, he was an attorney. He's done high publicity cases. He's done low profile cases. His former law partner says uh, he is the right person to preside over this case. He's as honest and hardworking person as you're ever going to find. He's going to give everyone in that courtroom a fair trial, and he's going to treat all of them equally. The Chauvin trial marks the first time cameras are going to be allowed in a Minnesota courtroom for a criminal case as well. So lots of firsts here. The trial for the other three officers charged in connection with Floyd's death is scheduled for later in August. Other news. Today is the day that Governor Walls planned on every school doing some level of in-person learning. He's trying to get all the middle schoolers and the high schoolers back. But the Pioneer Press this morning reports it's not happening. They say nine of Minnesota's 30 largest school districts will not have middle and high school kids in person this week. Now, all of them do have plans to bring those kids back in the coming weeks. In St. Paul, it's going to be an, a month from now. Minneapolis, about a month and a half. Some schools are working through this with teachers unions, others figuring out how do we bring in some of these, you know, larger classes. If you're not doing hybrid, you're bringing in the regular full group. How do you have 30, 35, 40 kids in a classroom? You're certainly not doing six feet social distancing. Probably hard to do three feet. So they're working that out. Some good news for older Minnesotans who are looking to get the COVID vaccine. If you are over 65 and you want to get vaccinated, this is your week. M Health Fairview says they got thousands of open vaccine appointments this coming week for seniors and for healthcare workers. MDH has said 64% of adults who are 65 and older have had at least one dose. Of that percentage may be a little smaller in the metro. Uh, so they just want to get everybody vaccinated. The governor says he wants 70%. So we're close, right? 64%. And he wants 70 before we extend this out to other groups. So let's go. If you're looking for a vaccine and you're 65 or plus or you're, you're a kid and you're looking for your parent, go to WCCO.com. We'll get you to that. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, that is the talk of the nation and the talk of Britain. Uh, opening up to Oprah about their struggles during and post royal life. It was quite a dramatic interview. First time this couple has done a TV interview since getting married. They say they left the UK because they weren't getting enough support from the royal family during times of public scrutiny and backlash. Meghan was very open about her struggles with mental health. I just didn't, I just didn't want to be alive anymore. And that was a very clear and real and frightening constant thought by that decision oh it's just heartbreaking that she went to you know the, the one thing that i learned in this is that there's this whole other layer so you think about the queen you think about prince charles you think about uh you know the children and kate middleton part of this but there's this whole like administration and Megan called it the firm, but it's sort of the bureaucrats who run the royalty. And you know, these people don't like change. They like it the way they like it. So anyway, uh, interesting stuff from Oprah. They are expecting their second child. They revealed they're having a daughter. Uh, Buckingham Palace so far hasn't commented on the interview. The interview will be seen in its entirety in uh, London and throughout England over the next couple hours. So it aired here on CBS first and you can watch the whole thing on the CBS app. It is International Women's Day, a day to celebrate all the women in your life, all the women across the world. Organizers say the theme this year is choose to challenge because from challenge comes change. I like that. Uh, you know, a lot of people today are going to post pictures. You see this from companies, right? They're going to trot out every woman that's part of their leadership or part of their team. And I guess I would just challenge back to make sure you're doing that year round, right? It's International Women's Day. Yes, let's call out gender bias and inequality. Let's raise up the women in all of our organizations, but let's do it tomorrow too. So watch for that. Okay, we're talking about jury duty. I've never been called to jury duty in my life here which kind of is a bummer. I would love to be on a jury. Mitzi says no, would not want to be on that jury. Too high profile. 
Would I be a target of someone who disagrees with my decision? I think that's the toughest thing about this one, right? Thanks, Mitzi. Leanne says, I can't imagine the difficulty and stress being part of it. Yeah, all respect, all prayers for anybody on that panel. Yeah, it's tough when you're on a jury like this because you're a human in our community too and you know that everyone is looking to this verdict for whatever they perceive justice to be. And it's hard when you're one of those folks, as Simon says, be very difficult. It really seemed like you'd be challenging one of your moral or ethical beliefs. Very difficult discussion. Yeah, I think so too, right? Because we know what we saw. We know how we feel about that video. But just because we saw it and we believe it to be wrong, we know it to be wrong. That should have never happened. But evaluating the criminal evidence is very different. Looking at the evidence, looking at the toxicology. Melody says I would do it, but I wouldn't want the backlash of whatever the verdict. Yeah. Yeah, and if things go, you know, I, again, I just, I, I hesitate to make all this, this expectation that things are gonna go crazy. Cause I don't think they are. But yeah, James says the same thing. If things did go bad, you would feel like, gosh, should I have just like given the verdict whatever the opposite way? I don't know. It's a tough one. I'm grateful for everybody who serves on any jury, uh, but the people who serve on this one, uh, I, I have empathy for your struggle. It'll be hard, but we need that. We need a jury of our peers and we need people to be open-minded and say, yeah, I'm gonna sit here for two, three weeks, four weeks and listen to the facts, look at the law, and determine justice. Uh, we'll be with you all the way. I'll be anchoring our trial coverage on CBSM Minnesota, uh, and we'll see you there. We'll see you back here tomorrow for